name is Tamara Cordy. I'm a respiratory physician at Royal Prince Alfred Hospital in Sydney, where I'm the Director of Interstitial Lung Diseases, and I'm an Associate Professor at the University of Sydney. And I'm also the lead investigator for the Centre of Research Excellence for Pulmonary Fibrosis, which aims to extend and improve the lives of our patients with pulmonary fibrosis across all of Australia. My name's Mark Brook, and I'm the Chief Executive Officer of the Lung Foundation Australia, which is Australia's leading consumer health organisation that takes care of patients with all types of lung disease. My name is Dana Ball. I am the Executive Director of Three Legs Foundation, our foundation it focuses on pulmonary fibrosis with specific dedicated programs and improving time to diagnosis and accelerating therapy. Pulmonary fibrosis is a group of conditions which are characterized by a common scarring or fibrosis of the lung tissue, which causes breathlessness and often a dry cough which is often progressive in our patients. There are a number of different types of pulmonary fibrosis and therefore a number of different types of causes. Um, some of the causes include things like autoimmune conditions such as rheumatoid arthritis or um, scleroderma, for example, and others include um, things in the environment. So for example, at someone's workplace, there might be asbestos or silica or other things in the environment, such as mold or feathers, for example. And more rarely, we see pulmonary fibrosis, which can run in families. So that's a genetic cause. But most commonly, the situation is that we see no cause, and in which case we call this idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. It's a very rare disease. And the foundation wanted to make sure that we invested not just in chronic illness, but also in rare lung diseases. 11 years ago, the foundation made its first investment in the pulmonary fibrosis uh, registry. And it's really a world leader because it was collecting data from patients before many of the contemporary treatments for pulmonary fibrosis were available. So we now have this wonderful snapshot of patients pre and post fibrotic medications. And that might, that's enabled us to better understand the condition, but also to attract new research investment, which is why we're so proud to be able to partner with the Centre of Research Excellence, whose work have followed the creation and the maintenance of that research registry. Working on pulmonary fibrosis has many challenges. It's a very small, rare disease. There's only an estimated 50,000 diagnosed EF cases in the US each year and survival is only two to three years. We have a lot of work to better understand this disease and to develop new therapies and treatments that will actually stop and prevent fibrosis from progressing. The incidence of idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis is increasing globally. In, in the USA, for example, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis accounts for over 16,000 deaths annually, which is a um, with an age-adjusted mortality of 28% in men and 41% in women. Now, we also have some hope. We, we know that there is some effective treatment for idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. Back in 2014, two antifibrotic medications, nintednib and bifinidone, were both shown to slow the rate of disease progression down by about 50%. So this has provided immense benefit and some hope for our patients with pulmonary fibrosis in Australia. But I think what these facts show is what we don't know. And at least now we know what we don't know and what we need to focus on for research going forward in pulmonary fibrosis. Lung Foundation Australia has had a very long and incredibly productive relationship with the Centre of Research Excellence in Pulmonary Fibrosis. About eight years ago, an Australian philanthropic family who lost their father to pulmonary fibrosis reached out to the foundation and wanted to make an investment in PF research. It made perfectly good sense to combine that generosity and goodwill with the CRE's excellence in its research and our commitment to translating that research into patient outcomes. We were delighted when we were able to bring those three together with an international collaboration. The foundation has watched the work of the Three Lakes Foundation in the United States for some time now, 
and we share a very, very common goal and a very common strategic agenda. So it made perfectly good sense for our coalition and collaboration here in Australia to reach out across borders to be able to develop what is quite a unique international collaboration where we're about to share information, research findings and ideas to promote and prosecute a much brighter future for patients living with pulmonary fibrosis. You know, since I started with Three Lakes Foundation almost three years ago, I've been incredibly impressed by the interest from academia and industry to invest in research projects, programs, and clinical trials for this disease. At Three Lakes Foundation, we have partnered with the government, we have partnered with foundations, and we're very excited about this new partnership with the Australian groups. Today, there's almost 20 clinical trials in the pipeline, which has provided tremendous hope and, and part of the success of these clinical trials is the advancement of the understanding of the biology, the genetics, and even environmental factors. My research is really focused at the Centre of Research Excellence for Pulmonary Fibrosis, and the aim there is to address this need for more effective um, identification and diagnosis and treatment of our pulmonary fibrosis patients. So the approach is national and it's collaborative, um, right through from the bench side, ranging through to clinical trials. And this new collaboration with the Three Lakes Foundation, the Lung Foundation Australia, is going to help us work on some new strategic initiatives. And some of these exciting new projects include using artificial intelligence to help accurately predict the disease course for an individual at the time of diagnosis, self-management of pulmonary fibrosis, the role of air pollution and other environmental exposures in developing pulmonary fibrosis and its progression, the impact of COVID-19 and isolation of our pulmonary fibrosis patients and their families, and to better understand the molecular signatures that can help refine diagnosis, predict treatment response, and characterise an individual patient's prognosis at the onset of their disease. Our team will be incorporating these new approaches into our national plan to help improve the care of our patients with pulmonary fibrosis. There's such a large unmet need for our patients with pulmonary fibrosis, both with understanding the disease process, um, effectively diagnosing and personalising and improving the management. And there are lots of individual researchers across the globe working on this extremely well. So our hope with this collaboration with the Three Lakes Foundation is, um, in the US, the Lung Foundation Australia, and the Centre of Research Excellence for Pulmonary Fibrosis in Australia, is that we can leverage some of this expertise and, and resources that are working across the globe and fast track some of this research to bring therapies for our patients earlier. Lung Foundation Australia recognises that increasingly research is a global commitment. If we just stop and reflect on COVID-19 and vaccinations, uh, for a second, you can see when the, our global community unites behind a research endeavour, we can really make enormous strides forward. So from the Lung Foundation's perspective, it made perfectly good sense that if we were to advance early diagnosis, if we were to advance patient self-management, if we were to look at new novel therapies and new ways of diagnosing the disease, that we shouldn't be an island, we should work collaboratively across borders and we're really thrilled that the Three Lakes Foundation has been able to create really what is a global beginning of a global collaboration. At Three Lakes Foundation, we knew we needed a global partner. And we also knew that we really wanted the right makeup of our partner. We needed government funding, we needed a disease organization, we needed a research consortium like the Center for Research Excellence, but we also needed the passion. And, and so I will never forget the first meeting we had with the Australian team in, in a very private philanthropist who was affected by loss of this disease was really driving the agenda. And, and so his passion connected with our family's passion and really paved the way for this incredible partnership to begin and grow. Mm -hmm.